So is anyone finding me now? Okay, so it's on my channel now, I think. So yes, people dropping in. I don't know what has happened there. I haven't really done anything different. It just uh, didn't come up live on my channel. So anyone who's just joining now, guys, uh, great to see you. Uh, Frederick, good to see you. Cressmere, good to see you. Billy. Al's back, Lee J. Brown, Matt Cigars and Whiskey. Guys, I, I really genuinely do not know what happened there. I was, uh, as far as I was concerned, it was live. Uh, everything was going live as normal, the same way as I always do it, and nothing happened. Uh, only thank you, Alan from Whiskey Straight Al, for pointing out that it, it hadn't went live on my channel for whatever reason. I do not know. But... Uh, Listen, good to see you coming in, guys. Uh, I genuinely don't know what happened there. Uh, because even, yes, Spelly's saying there was no pre live selection. I don't understand that. Yeah, uh, Peter Peter Box is saying that he came in through Patreon. So it was, obviously, the, the link was live. The link was working, but it just didn't pick up. So I'm going to start again because something happened tonight and I just want to, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to just like let this go because my patrons, my patrons are involved and it was this. So can we start again? If you don't mind, welcome to another uh, Jim's Monday. <laughs> That happens now. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I've got intros, there'll be other stuff later. So, uh, let's, as I say, we've started again and we'll get going from here. Good to see you all in. Paul Gibbs is in, Andy C's in, say Chris Mears in, Graham McNeil's in. Graham, uh, glad to see you in because I will be uh, calling upon Graham later on. I even had. Uh, things set up, so we'll 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 move on, and uh, and I'll I, I just genuinely do not know what understand or understand what happened at the start. I've I've having I'm having messages come up on my phone, which I'm not going to get into. Other people will, uh, <laughs> other people, other people I'm sure will point them in the direction. Monday night hide and seek with Jim. Love it, Al. Yep, love it. So, how are you all now that we're here? Good to see you. Uh, I, as I said earlier, I'm just polishing off a little uh, Jack Daniels single barrel old fashioned here. And tonight, the plan is to go into my samples as usual. The samples tonight, and I'll introduce them to you now, so as we get them out of the way. The first one I will be doing, I'm going to do these in order, simply because you can see maybe that's 46% ABV. That's the High West uh, Burrai, <coughs> pardon me, which is a mixture between burr, it's a, it's a blend, it's a bourbon and rye blend, and this Stag Junior Barrel Proof Batch 11 from uh, my good friend Graham McNeil, who's in here tonight. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. old fashions 
always last longer than I expect. I want to drink it while it's still cold. Pardon me. Right. We've established this. It's happening. So where do we move from here? I have a question to ask you because I like I always like to throw a question in just to give you something to think about. And it is, and this will only affect some of you. This will affect some of you more than others. And there's actually a few names in here already whom I expect this will this would affect. And the question is, if Scotch whiskey were taken out of the equation tomorrow, <clears throat> what would you where would you go? Would you go to would you still just fall back on other whiskies? Would you maybe go to other spirits? Would you, or would you, I don't know, sobriety? You know, uh, it was suggested, I asked this question, this question was hinted at last night in Roy's VPUB, on Aquavides VPUB, and uh, the doc, McCallum Fine and Rare, suggested suicide, which is a bit extreme, but he did, <laughs> he did say, uh, that, you know, he did say he's an extreme man. Uh, just before we go any further, new dram drinker, Ant and Nicky, good to see you in. Guys, you look a lot more attractive in that t-shirt. It brings out the colour in your eyes. Thanks, guys. This is one of their, this is, and I had sort of thought tonight, but it just didn't happen, that this is one of their ball kill bill t-shirts, which I'm very fond of. So the question was, if Scotch whiskey were taken out of the equation tomorrow, what would you what would you fall back on or what would you rely on? Now, the reason I'm saying that this will affect some more so than others in this group that's that's here right now, the, the likes of a Whiskey Pilgrim, I would say, Frederick likes his scotch. I know he likes his, uh, his Springbanks and his Campbelltowns. I know that there's whiskey straight al has suggested that yes bourbon or irish and that's because he would have already been a sort of bourbon and irish guy i know that this was you know graham mcneil i was going to mention graham because there's something called scotch and this is the thing i know that graham's a bourbon and uh and an irish whiskey drinking guy and and we'll get to that later we will come back to graham later right that's finished i say finally but paul gibbs really Ill. funny you should say that paul my bearded friend that uh because that was something that McCallum Fine and Rare come back with. Maybe just go back to beer. And it's, I find that strange because I would have said that I, I would just have thought other people would have went for other whiskies. Cognac, I found recently. Now, Frederick, I just seen uh, I just seen this as I was passing. Buy more Swedish whiskey and try other whiskey from countries like Ireland. You see, this is the thing. Uh, and it just, but the reason why I sort of thought this was I'm a, I rely on Scotch whiskey. I, I I would tend to lean on Scotch whiskey more than any others. And this is why I, I asked the question. Uh, you know, so I just I just thought I would ask it. Peter Box is saying uh join his wife with a drink of rum. Rum. Obviously, another very popular one at the moment. She doesn't like whiskey. Peter Ray with Canadian whiskey. Good stuff. More Harris too. Yellow spot on the go. Now, you know, oh, yellow spot on the go. We do like our yellow spot. Right. I have finished one and I've moved on. Now, I'm not kicking into my samples yet because I want to just get the palette going with something uh, a little different. Well, 
and it's not really that different. It's the Elijah Craig small batch. I'm just going to warm up properly on it. Just take a little time over it while we're chit chatting, getting on. Radic, it's ECBP. Elijah Craig. Did you are you writing the barrel proof? No. It's the uh, it's just a small batch. I take it that's what you're suggesting. <laughs> Yet again, Frederick said, you know, he would cry, but there's so much so much more than Scotch whiskey. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I caught a bit of uh, Frederick was on yesterday with uh, Gregoire of uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide. He did a lovely solo bit for a while, Frederick. I enjoyed that. And, uh, you know, the, the, these whiskies are popping up left, right and centre now from all over the world, which yet again raised the question. And somebody also suggested to me that if Japan gets their finger out again and starts producing Scotch whiskey, will then start to not mean as much, I would suggest, because we all know that Japan tend to make a very Scotch-ish whiskey. Crispy, good evening, my friend. So we've moved on to Elijah Craig small batch. I really like this bourbon. I haven't I haven't made it last me as much as I would like. And this is why uh, I wore the bottle kill shirt tonight. If Ant and Nick are still in because I, I actually thought that there's a good chance that ball may have died today because I fancied it. I, I was working outside today and uh, got very warm and et cetera. And, and there were a few cocktails on the go. Mm -mm -mm. We get so used, I think, to Scotch whiskey, Irish whiskey. You know where you're going with them. You, you can generally. Now, I lean on Scotch whiskey because there's a there's more variety, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and, you know, I know there's those who will uh, disagree with me, but the the, the, the Graham McNeils of this world in there <coughs> could, could pick a difference between, uh, let, let's just take, for example, because I'll be I'll be I'll be opening this a sample from Graham later of Stag Junior. And if we look at Stag Junior, you're looking at Buffalo Trace as a distillery. So you take Buffalo Trace and and wrap it up in a great big ball there and you say that well look even just a that Stag Junior, Buffalo Trace itself, uh, Eagle Rare, H. Taylor, uh, you know, you're looking at Mash Bill 1 there, Mash Bill number 1. They, they produce so much that that it's very, but yet there's people out there, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm pulling Graham McNeil out there as a friend of mine, who would be able to define subtle differences between those bourbons. Now, me personally, give me, and as I say, I'm sitting here now with a Elijah Craig small batch. And it is beautiful stuff. Just want to say hello quickly. Malt Punk, Ben Demon Hunter, Kupo Kupo, 
I hope we're getting that right. And this is, as I say, Elijah Craig, small batch, lovely. As a bourbon goes, it's it's nice, subtle notes, subtle, uh, caramelly. Light, oaky, woody notes. There is sweet. I would say there's a sweet orange in there almost. I already know, as I say, that I like I like this bourbon. But I would guarantee if you set a E.H. Taylor in front of me or a, even a Buffalo Trace, I would probably struggle to find those differences. David Owens in, good to see you, buddy. Now, I have poured myself something else, but I'm not going to go into it just yet. It's, and, it, and, and if anybody's watched my review, they'll know that I like this, and there's a reason why I've poured this. And the last time, if anybody was here two weeks ago for the live feed, um, <laughs> it got a bit out of control, and there was a bit of live blending happened. And I've actually prepared for it tonight because you never know, it could well happen again. But this is just creamy and really bizarrely just soft and sweet. And I love this. And I will, I'm just gonna set it to one side again because there's a reason why I've, I've, I've made the, the effort to pour a lot 40 rye and remember this is 100% rye and it is because my first sample I'm going to dip into my first sample here and it is burr rye from high west now if you can read that if anybody can tell me who sent me this if, if there's anyone in here there's there's only 20 of you in but anybody watching this even on the the replay if you sent me this thank you because I have a few samples here in little bottles like this and similar and I have no idea where they came from but I'm very pleased that I have them Greg's whiskey guide is in Greg good to see you my friend sorry there was a there was some sort of weird thing happened earlier on that it just the broadcast didn't kick off when it should have done but we're here now so this is Burai from High West any of you out there tried it please please let me know your thoughts I've done a, a little research on this basically what you're looking at is an American blend it's all uh it's all MGP, as far as I know. It's it's uh, but, and I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna give you a little because I've, I've written down here. It's they 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 really base this thing on on the jackalope, which is if you th it's it's the jackalope's a, a cross between a, a rabbit and an antelope. Uh, it's it's this American fictional character basically so this is what they've you know they use the jackalope on their label for this because it's it's a blend and it's a blend of straight bourbon and rye whiskies aged a minimum of 10 years <clears throat> and it's a strange it is a strange thing it's, it's and it's they say it's sourced from multiple distilleries which confuses things a bit because it's all MGP so it's all it's all the same new make well when I say it's all the same new make the new makes all coming from the same place but then I'm imagining that they're 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 maturing it and from in different distilleries and then now one thing I did read on the label uh which I love 
Donner Pass Whiskey's in. Good to see you, Tim. We are, uh, anybody that just came in, we are now sipping High West Bar Rye, the blend. What they do say on the label, and I, I thought this was brilliant. And please, you know, to me, put this on every label, I think, every whiskey label. It says, <clears throat> pardon me, the dry cough. What's what, what's going on? Right? <laughs> Open smoke whiskey reviews in. Good to see you. Uh, sip, yes, it says on the label, sip straight or with a little water, not recommended with ice. Brilliant. Put that on every whiskey bottle label, I say. Yes, it is a, here's the mash bill for this really, because it is, it's a blend, it's an American blend. Straight rye, 95% rye, 5% malt, okay? There's two straight bourbons in it, one, 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malt. And the second one, straight bourbon, 60% corn, 36% rye, 4% malt. Somebody's obviously taken a lot of time over this. There's a bit of thought in it. Now, it has taken a while to open up. I, it really has. Because... When I poured this, now it's a, it's a very little sample, and yet again, no idea who sent me it. <coughs> but, and still, and I find this bizarre, it's, it's got a, a, a basic, and I hope it tastes a lot better than it smells because it's got a very basic Jack Daniels gluey nose to it. And when I say gluey nose, I, I always consider like, uh, and Ralphie actually described this at a time where he says, if you, if you want to taste uh, air fix glue, taste Jack Daniels. And I have to agree with him that there's, there's an air fix glue thing that really sharp a uh, glue thing with it and that is on the nose i mean compared to this is the the lot 40 rye which i'm actually going to cap again because it's starting to, to get very soft but the, there's nothing of a rye. I mean, that's 100% rye, and there's nothing of, in this, at the minute, this burr rye, it's all sharp. Slightly, there is a slight burnt note of it. And I know that uh, they do, they suggest, sip it around a, a campfire you know that, that this is what they suggest themselves see <clears throat> graham mcneil and a funny graham i wasn't sure actually of the price range even and that's in america now graham spends a lot of his time in america with work so he knows you know what price these things are going for very hard to find over here. All High West, quite hard to find over here. Bob Jenkins, good to see you, my friend. But this is to say, it, there is a burnt smell. And starts to go slightly, uh, slightly bitter on the nose. I, say, I do hope it tastes better than it smells. In fairness, it does. Yeah. It's quite thin. It's 46% ABV. It's quite, quite a thin palate. Yeah, sorry, just saying a, a few chats 
in the and yes, uh, Graham, and I know Graham has already answered this. That uh, although I don't think it's stated, Greg, I think everything is a minimum of uh, ten years. So uh, and Graham had already answered the same. It's weird. It's one of those whiskies that the palate does not translate, or sorry, the nose doesn't translate into the palate. The palate goes quite, it's quite thin, but it's solid. It's thin, but solid. It coats and it's still there and I think I read somewhere that this that that they uh, I read that there was butterscotch on the palate. Sorry, I was outside. <clears throat> I was outside working all day, and I'm gone rather dry tonight. I have actually just the tiniest little drop of this. And I'm going to keep that tiny little drop. But yes, thin. This is, this just washes away very, very quickly. Is it bourbon? Is it rye? It's it's like I would actually suggest it is like a poor and this is why yet again we rely I rely on scotch because scotch whiskey answers my questions in most cases. And it does so here again. This to me is like a poor Scotch blend where it's not as good as the sum of its parts. You know, the, the can't really tell you where it would it would uh, it would who it would be aimed at. Uh, sorry, just want to pull this up, but yes, it all went a bit wrong at the start of this tonight. I do not know why. Uh, it just didn't go live for some reason at the start of, of this tonight. It just didn't work for me. Don't know why. I, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> I'm not even sure what the title of this uh, live is anymore, but there's 22 of you in, and I, I really, really appreciate that. I can't thank you enough. Uh, Whiskey Pilgrims off. Uh, Frederick, thanks thanks for coming in, my friend. Mm. So there you are. Uh, High West. I haven't had High West before. I have been dying to try High West for quite some time. That's not a good place to start. Is it really? Uh, because you know you're looking, you're already looking at a blend, so it's not like as if you're you're just. I, I would say High West are better than that. Bud Jenkins. If you're coming to Ireland, please come to the north, my friend. Please. There, there's distilleries here. <laughs> so what are we going to do? Well, you see, for now, I'm going to, that's the first sample out of the way. And I'm going to jump into the chat again and reiterate the question I asked earlier on. Uh, 
if Scotch were taking off, were taken off the table tomorrow, taken out of the equation, would whiskey still be your thing? Would you still be a whiskey drinker? Would you try other spirits? Would you try other whiskies? Would you, does Scotch mean that much to us that? Honestly, I've been drinking bourbon. Not all day. I'm not, you know, I haven't gone that far. I mean, three weeks of lockdown's bad, but, you know, I'm not. Uh, but I miss Scotch already. I, 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 I like bourbon. I like Irish whiskey. But, and I'm pulling those two out as they're, those are the big hitters outside of Scotland. To me, there's still the three big hitters in whiskey. The three styles of whiskey, if you want to put it like that, are for me a Scotch, Irish, and American bourbons, bourbons and ryes. I'm, I'm pulling bourbons and ryes into one thing, but you know. And as I say, I do like them, but there's just not enough variety for me in bourbon. There's not enough variety for me in Irish whiskey. It even tends to get a bit. The Irish whiskey at the moment, I've said this a few times, is stagnating still. But it's only because we're still waiting for these new distilleries to, to start and put out their own stuff. Luna Aaron's in. Luna, good to see you. We are, uh, we're all doing well, I think, I hope. Hmm. Still sipping away at this little Elijah Craig small batch. Now, we are going to move on to uh, my next sample which is and this <laughs> this could all go wrong here a moment bear with me if it does because i want to share a picture with you and uh, i just want to uh, yeah <laughs> this fella there's a better look. This is uh, you, you, you'll now if you're on Instagram, you'll maybe know him. This is a, a good friend of mine, and I call him a good friend because he is. Uh, this is uh, a, a, this is whiskey Graham, and as I say, if you're on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, Graham, that's the fella. Uh, <laughs> if uh, you're on Instagram, you maybe know Whiskey Graham. And this is him and I last year at a... Uh, uh, this was the Hinch Distillery launch in Belfast. And uh, we had a, a rare old time. And it was the reason why... I've, I've pulled that up is because it was the night. I don't know, it wasn't the night. Well, it was the night they gave me these samples. Now, Graham uh, is, is a very generous fella. He really is. Lovely chap. And uh, Graham and I have shared a few samples back and forth. And this is one that he shared with me and he shared he has shared some fabulous whiskies with me this is stag junior barrel proof and this having done a little research is batch 11 from winter 2018 bottled at 127.9 proof so 
Yep. It's got a it's got a healthy nose on it. Like myself. So Stag Jr. Buffalo Trace Distillery. Yes, we all know that. Frankfurt, Kentucky. As I say, this is mash bill number one. So you're looking at ten percent or less. Rye. It's got volume on the nose. What I always call volume. It's got, as Greg has just described, and I think it's a very good description, big US guns. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's spirity, but it's, it's, <clears throat> it's tasty spirity. It's oak, it's honey. Yeah, very nice. This is actually one of my favorites tonight on the nose. As I say, I was at this Elijah Craig small batch earlier, which I do like, but Sometimes I think bourbon takes a little oomph. It takes a little more volume to, to, to throw it out of the glass at you. And this certainly has it. Oh, that's stunning. That is stunning. That does to me. Yet again, that does to me what a good. Uh, <laughs> does to me. So I was reading this. <laughs> I love Alan's sense of humor, I really do. He swears it was glowing in the dark. <laughs> and I remember actually watching, I think Al had, has a review on of a Stag Junior. And I remember what, I think it's a Stag Junior that he has a review on. And I remember watching it and, and chuckling and laughing about how, and I think actually in that review, he did the same thing. It was certainly something which was high proof American. And it just, it does, it just, it, I mean, it probably knocked me back in my seat there, but it's, mm. yes, damn, it was a Stag Junior. Whew. Can you remember? What batch it was, Al? Uh, I found a good, uh, if you can, I found a great website earlier on, which uh, put, put you through all the batches very easily. As I say, this is batch 11, 64% ABV. It, it has got much ball, I think is the, is the, the way one would describe it. Yeah. It's peppery, it's fiery, but cinnamon. But there's cherry in there as well, vanilla. Yeah, no, this is this is this is lovely. Uh, Graham, cheers, my friend. Thank you for sharing this with me. 
it's it's got a lot going on not only has it got all that oomph got all that big thing going there but the flavors and what i like about it is the flavors are there but i named four five flavors there cinnamon vanilla cherry i did get cherry pepper but which, which are a lot of the things that you tend to get with these but i would say that there's not a whole lot more than that going on but i like that this is what i liked about Kilkerran and what I still like about Kilkerran it's not a jumble of flavors it's not I'm not put, I'm not going to put I wouldn't put I'm not going to put Ralphie down for one second he's a, he's a hero to me but uh, you know you, every now and again to me you can throw out flavors there and just keep going and going and going and going and it just adds up and adds up to the point where it's a it's a, a bit of a mismatch it's confusing this is relatively simple but damn good simple as in it's got this it's got that it's got what you want and it's got it in spades Mm. But cheers, mate. Thank you for joining me on, well, that's the Elijah Craig barrel proof. As I say, I do, I like the Elijah Craig as well. So, uh, yeah. No, this is, this is proper. And what will happen is, tonight Monday night uh, this will actually get polished off tonight I would say although just for shits and giggles you may see me blending this with a bit of lot 40 rye who's judging <laughs> Who's gonna stop me? <sighs> Chris B's in with the uh, the the Elijah Craig barrel proof as well. Isn't it funny? But Chris, you're saying uh, I put you in a bourbon mood. This is what I love. This is something that I I love about, about whiskey that um, you, you're in a mood, for, you know, you maybe have a sip of something, you go for a scotch, you, you have your scotch now, you have your Irish, you have whatever, and then the power of suggestion, somebody says, yeah, I fancy something sweet, sweeter, something, something, and I, and I don't have a massive bourbon or rye collection, but if enough, to do me and what I've actually started doing recently which was something I didn't do before I, I, I didn't do before I started uh, my journey a lot was drink uh, mix you know uh, colas mixing colas or whatever and now I've started I, I discovered the other week I actually made I just poured it and it's it's and I'm gonna name it. I'm gonna say it was Coke Zero, and for some reason Coke Zero works better for me than Coke Coke. There's something about Coke Zero is that lack of sugar balances out. Maybe I'm just being silly, but it, it just balances out better than full fat, what we always call full fat Coke. And uh I had a, a cola or one of these with bourbon and it just, it was, and I think I actually suggested to somebody recently, it was Old Forester, I have it sitting here, Old Forester and Coke Zero and it was just, 
awesome as a it was a warm day and it was just awesome as a warm day drink because there's a leatheriness that I know uh, Graham and I have discussed. There's a leatheriness with Old Forester, which I really like. That the sweet, the slight sweetness balanced out very well on that uh, on that Coke Zero, and I've just seen another one coming in from whisk uh, from Whiskey Street Isle, Pepsi Max. You see, so something slightly different. It's not just Coke. Uh, Luna Arn has said about making a, a painted highball, and that just sounds amazing. Calhoun and and tonic sounds amazing to me. I know somebody in this group that would hate it, but uh, Evan and, and Peter Box saying Evan Williams and Coke Zero, you know. So the, it's it's one of these things that I actually had. Yes, yes, yesterday. A uh, what I, what I call it, and it's it's along the, the lines of Luna Arans there, a smoky cookie, and it's I don't know whether anybody else does it, but it was a Lefroig quarter cask and Coke Zero, and it really balances out. There's something about that smoke influence and. Coke, but not full fat Coke. That just, it's, there's just something different about it. Hmm. There you are. Wasn't a, a summer that was planning to go down the night, but we're just chatting on chit chat. Yes. Stag Junior barrel proof. Hundred twenty seven point nine proof. Is awesome there's there's actually going to be more mm. more going to this glass because before i do so i want to check and see i want to go back to i've got glasses going on everywhere here i've got toppers going on everywhere here The uh, Bud Jenkins just asked the question. There was one of seen what was the oh the ratio? Peter Box was asking. That's <laughs> that's a good question. I was making it up as I go along because, well, I was using this glass. All right, so. And I had ice in it, but if you were to take the ice out of it, I would say I probably had about this much Lefroy. So that was probably it's probably you're probably still looking at good. And I'm gonna say two ounces because it was mixing earlier on. Uh, so I'm, I'm just guessing here. And then now remember, ice filled it up with coke and actually had a slice of orange in it as well which just just adds i just like orange in a drink so that, that was just something for me what have i missed i think i've kicked something off with the smoky cookie <laughs> ginger american ale david owens sent yes agree yeah american ale or uh, ginger ale is an, another Classic brandy and ginger ale or cognac and ginger ale. Something, yeah, something I haven't had in a while, but I love. So, what have I done? I've put a little Stag Junior in here just to top this up. Graham, please, please, please forgive me for doing this, but it's all in the name of experimentation. I'm I'm gonna this is a uh, lot 40 rye and this could all just be a horrible mess
this lot for a rye I love. That's just, mm. there's a weird bitter sweetness with it that, that really, really grips me. furniture polish but soft not like not like I find a, 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 a hefty bourbon sometimes there's a there's a polish with it that that's not nice Graham doesn't like peanut whiskey. <laughs> I, Luna, I, I could put off Coke with alcohol a long time ago. And uh, when I say I could put it off, I, I got, it was the vodka and Coke thing and all that there of my youth. And then basically, put off alcohol in that way and then you know sometimes I think you, you go away and then you come back and it's weird that, and and I think too that sometimes it just suits the moment that uh, as I say the smoky cokey thing and I've just tried different I would actually be quicker to try something now mixing it with coke than trying I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about the uh Uh, old fashions using smoky and peated whiskies and whatnot and I just I haven't tried it yet because it just the thought of it just does not appeal to me at all maybe Graham's crying because I'm going to mix something with the Stag Junior maybe Paul Gibbs is drinking is sipping a lag of villain eight I'm wondering what the rest of us are sitting. Well, as I say, Paul, I could be sitting something very interesting at the moment. Now, this is the Stag Junior. This is the one that I think is quite obviously is going to be a problem because it's it's a heavy ABV. Yes. Yes, Graham's. Graham's crying. Whiskey Scout on the coffee. Good man. He's crying because I'm going to be mixing something with his stag junior. I'm just right. What am I doing? What am I doing? There's it all gone wrong. Yeah, that, oh, you know, the lot, for, you would need to, I'm going to wait for a moment, chat away to you, let this come down a bit, because that's the wrong balance at the moment. This, for all that's in this, compared to this, is still, to me, going to overpower this big time because when you go back to the stag junior it just it just pars over everything in a great great way uh, just before green goes in the meltdown it, it is there's still a drop left that i'm going to enjoy properly when this is all over and now 
actually getting back now you can actually start to smell the peppermint and those small minty wintergreen things that go on in the lot 40 rye for me that uh, I had forgotten about and, and it's weird because generally I would find that the overpowering one well the, the you know it's the old school if this if this were scotch this is space side lot 40 is space side this is a heavily peated you know that's the difference is probably the best way i can describe it yes very light spearmint actually i was saying it was wintergreen but it is just this is the lot 40 is spearmint and it's soft it's sweet it's chewy Elijah Craig is your big, bold, but not, you know, as I say, still held to those three or four flavors. Graham, don't, uh, well, Graham's saying about uh, Law 40. I, I tell you what, Graham, you are close enough, my friend. And I, Graham and I live within a few miles of each other. So we are, yes, we're locked down. Week three, partly. I, 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 will throw, I, I already had samples held aside for you, Graham. I, so, I mean, I could throw them to a point where you could pick them up rather than, I don't want to post anything at the moment because... It has all gone wrong. Right. I'm going to add a little bit of the Lot 40 rye. Here we go, children. It happened two weeks ago. It's going to happen again today. I hadn't planned this, really. Say I hadn't planned it. I had poured them, but uh, I hadn't poured them for the purpose of mixing them, blending them. But just... While we're here, you know, we're here anyway. Uh, who else is going to let us know this stuff? The, the Stag Junior is still very prominent. I may have to, I'm, I'm not going to, it's typical blending, isn't it? I mean, you don't just, throw two things in a glass and expect to, expect magic to happen. But the uh, the Stag Junior is still the prominent note <clears throat> coming out there. It's interesting. It's certainly it's certainly better than uh, it's certainly better than what I was getting from the burr rye. You know what? That is nice. The subtlety of the the lot forty comes in first, and you know just coats in it, and it's the it's it's the power of the the stag junior, which makes the 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 development and then the finish that ain't bad i would be tempted and i will be tempted to add a little more uh of the lot 40 
don't want to overpower the stag, but I don't think you could overpower the stag, Junior. But you can smell that mint from the lot 40. But it keeps the woodiness, the vanilla, the oak of the the stag alive. There's no it doesn't drown out. Uh, sorry, Oak and Smoke is asking about the, the Longmorn 16. I haven't actually tried the Longmorn 16. Uh, sorry. <laughs> People, uh, I, 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 uh, the name Whiskey Novice is actually pretty genuine. <laughs> I, don't, I, I haven't had the long. I haven't had any Longmorn. I don't think. Sorry. I and I hope to at some point, but just at the moment I haven't. Can't really go any further than that. What I have had now is Stag Junior Lot Forty. I'm not a bad drink, is it? Uh, that's pretty much right. What have we done tonight? Well, we completely cocked up the start. And then it came eventually and sorted itself out. The fact that we've made it this far is, is pretty impressive. Uh, I do enjoy that stag junior barrel proof as i say that's batch 11 and i will go back and enjoy the rest of it once again thank you uh graham for that lot 40 love it but i knew i loved it anyway borai high west borai no i don't know don't know about that Whiskey at Dom's is in. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, he's been out singing for Wales. I'm afraid we're just about to wrap it up, Tom, but thank you for popping in. Uh, yes, we are just about to wrap it up. And I would like to thank you all for being here, as usual. I would like to raise this glass of Lot 40, Stag Jr., uh, to you all, to those who share their whiskey, to the you know, and as everybody else is doing, and I agree. <coughs> pardon me. This is for uh, for those out there still on the front line, doing the bit for all of us, and it's it's really really appreciate it. It genuinely is. I'm gonna wrap this up because I. I Still like to spend a bit of time with the wife of a of a Monday evening, and then uh, I've got things to do tomorrow, as we all do, as I'm sure. But I really, really appreciate you all being here. Uh, it's it, things are moving on for me and and for everyone at the moment. It's a strange time, strange place, and uh, we're all getting by. And it's good to see you all here. It was good to see you all at the V Pub last night, and you know it's good that this community is still keeping going well. Thank you all. Thank you to my patrons. There's a few in tonight. Really appreciate the support. Your support has been shown. It was shown at the start. Most of you missed it, but we'll get there again. Listen. Thank you all for being here. Cheers. Here's to your good health.